Hello everyone, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. If you enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Also, share the video with anyone who you think may find it helpful. Now, today's video is extra exciting because we're going to be talking about the forehand ground stroke as well as the one and two-handed backhand ground stroke. Now, we are going to talk specifically about the two most important technical fundamentals to the ground strokes and unfortunately there's so much information out there regarding your ground stroke technique and most of you are working on things that are not these two fundamentals and unfortunately it's incredibly common that players do not have one and more than likely both of these technical fundamentals down as well as they should so in my opinion it's definitely silly to work on other things with your stroke technique if you don't have one or both of these technical fundamentals. Now, once again, unfortunately, the two most important parts of the ground stroke technique that will help you with power, control, and topspin are uh, very commonly not done well by players of most levels. So it's really important that you do not address other aspects to your technique until you have these two huge technical fundamentals. As you just heard, I'm gonna give you the two most important things you need to have great ground strokes. However, after doing a large portion of this video, I decided to make this a two-part video as the video is already lengthy, so you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for next week's video as well to hear the second ground stroke fundamental that you're probably not already doing. Let's begin. The first fundamental we're going to go over is the preparation. Now I'm going to show you the forehand first. I'll also show you the two and one-handed backhand. You'll see uh, slow-mo and full speed. You're also going to see me demonstrating what not to do in terms of the preparation. Now we've all heard that we need to prepare early. Maybe you've heard turn or racket back. There's a lot of different ways people say it. Now the key fundamental is you should be at the end of your backswing when the ball touches the ground on your side of the net, right? here. So you see how I do not take my racket back an inch after the ball has bounced on my side of the net. So whether the ball is bouncing right by the baseline or near the service line, you're always going to see I'm done with my backswing, I'm done with my turn just before or at the bounce of the ball. So this is key because what many players do is they wait until the ball bounces to start taking the racket back or to start turning and that is just incorrect. It's obviously natural for people to do this because so many players again wait for the bounce to prepare. However, you should actually again be done with your backswing, done with your shoulder turn prior to the ball bouncing on your side. Now if the ball is very fast, uh, you want it prior to the bounce and if the ball is slower, you're going to be done with your backswing around the time the ball bounces. But if you are still taking the racket back, or if you're still turning after the ball has already bounced on your side, then you are often going to be late. So we don't want to take a backswing and a forward swing after the bounce. We want to take only a forward swing after the bounce because we should have already done the preparation phase before the ball has come off the ground towards you. Now the reason preparation is so huge is because if you prepare late then you can't possibly do anything else in the swing correct because you're going to be playing catch up. Now when players prepare late their contact's going to be late, they're going to be falling back, they're not going to extend their hitting arm out through the shot which we're going to talk about later in this video. So there's a lot of issues that this causes when players prepare late. Uh, a couple others I can think of is you're not able to have time to get underneath the ball prior to your forward swing to create topspin because you take it back so late. So there's a lot of issues with that. Again, if you don't start your uh, stroke correctly with the preparation and preparing properly and preparing early, then you can kiss the rest of the stroke goodbye because it's simply not going to work. I mean, you can get it in, but it's going to be more of an arm swing. You're not going to be able to to use your entire body. Again, you're going to be falling back, contact's going to be late, and, it's, and you're going to have trouble with, with controlling the ball, especially the direction of the ball, and uh, you're, you're also going to have some potential injuries from making contact late consistently. And by the way, it just doesn't feel good to make contact late. It, it feels like you're hitting a brick versus if you hit the ball in front of your body, 
which can only be, be done if you prepare early enough, then it's going to feel uh, it's going to feel like a really good sensation. It feels like hitting a feather versus hitting a brick if the contact is late. So uh, preparation is key because nothing can be right in the stroke or very little can be right in the stroke if you prepare late. So it all starts with the beginning of the stroke being correct and then if the beginning or the preparation is correct you have a chance at doing the rest of the technique correct. So here's a little bit different view. Once again notice how when the ball is on the ground I'm done with my backswing. Now the stroke should be continuous ideally however there is a bit of a slowdown oftentimes right here prior to the forward swing and that's just to make sure that the racket is set before the forward swing what we don't want to do is rush the backswing and the forward swing so we don't want to accelerate on the backswing because we're late we want to be able to have some time so we prepare and I always I like to tell my players set the racket before the forward swing again it doesn't mean there should be a pause and notice I do not have a pause here but um, the constant is the preparation should be done before the bounce of the ball. Now it's important to video yourself because I can't tell you how many players I have where they think that they have prepared before the bounce when they in fact do not. So video yourself, set the camera right behind you and see if your racket is still going back after the bounce. It should not go back an inch after the bounce as you can see here. So hopefully I've made it very clear how important preparation is and Again, in the beginning of the video, I talked about how it's silly, in my opinion, to work on other things because you got to get this right in order to have a chance of doing anything else right in the stroke. So take a look here how I'm preparing after the bounce. Or I do part of my preparation before the bounce like most players. However, like most players, I continue to prepare after the bounce, which is a big no-no. In fact, uh, a common problem I see is players take two back swings. So they take the racket back. A little bit, ball bounces, and then they take their racket back again. So we don't want to have a, a, bump, a, a, a double backswing. We don't want a, a double pump. We want the swing to be continuous. You see here, I try to make it obvious. As I, it felt to me like I was taking the racket back super, super late. And I certainly am in, in this clip, but not as much as I thought. I wanted to make it more obvious than this. You see, this follow-through this falling back, this late contact is all a symptom of me being late in the turn and in the preparation. So you see here bounce and then my racket goes further back. Okay, it's a little better finish because I wasn't quite as late there. So if this was going full speed you would see that I'm accelerating in the backswing because I'm so late and then I'm accelerating the forward swing. There should not be acceleration in the backswing. So let's look at a few more clips of late preparation. Once again, I always want you to look at my racket, where it is in the backswing in comparison to when the ball is bouncing. When you prepare early, all of a sudden that fastball doesn't seem so fast and it feels like you have all the time in the world to prepare and get ready for the ball. Also makes timing much easier as I said before. Instead of doing the backswing and forward swing after the bounce, you only have to focus on the forward swing.
Now we're going to be taking a look at the two-handed backhand and notice how my front shoulder is pointing to the ball when the ball bounces. This is a great visual that I like to tell my players. Once again, you want to point your front shoulder, that's your right shoulder as a righty, to the ball when the ball is bouncing. So same commonalities as we saw in the forehand here. The racket does not move any further back once the ball is on the ground on my side. Also, I do not turn any further away from the net once the ball is on the ground on my side. Next time you watch tennis on TV, take a look at how the pros will complete their preparation at the bounce of the ball every time. Take a look at the Nike logo, the white Nike logo that's at the top left side of my chest. You'll see that you cannot see the logo when the ball is bouncing. That shows that I have completed my turn when the ball bounces. You can tell even in this slow-mo how I take the racket back slow, I nearly pause right here, and then acceleration starts. So this is the rhythm you want. Taking the racket back slow, you almost come to a pause. This shows that the preparation was early. Early means on time in tennis. Take a look at this. Boom. So even in slow-mo, again, watch how the rhythm is. I take the racket back slow. Always relative to the ball you're receiving, there's a lot of adaptation. And there's almost a pause at the end of the backswing. I want to quickly give you a demonstration here of what we don't want to do. So here I'm showing you late preparation. Take a look again at the white Nike sign on the top left of my shirt. You see you can see the white Nike sign when the ball bounces. Even, even well after the ball bounces, you can still see part of my chest. So this is not what we want to do. You see, look at my racket as well. My racket goes back after the bounce. So it's like I pause halfway through my backswing or three quarters into my backswing as opposed to having a, almost a pause at the end of my backswing. A lot of players see that. I pause at the wrong time. So we want to get that uh, almost pause at the end of the backswing. We don't want it right here. See? And then after the ball bounces, I take the racket back again. So the first flight is uh, of the ball is from the opponent's contact to your to the bounce on your side. And the second fly of the ball is from the bounce to your contact. It's important that we prepare in that first flight of the ball, not after the ball has bounced. We don't want to still be getting the preparation going after the ball has already hit the ground. Alright, for all the one-handed backhand players out there, it's crucial that you're not late because the one-handed backhand you actually hit further in front of the body than any other shot in tennis. Now, when it comes to the preparation, the commonalities are the same. You want to prepare before the ball bounces or no later than the bounce. Um, once again, one-handers, your strike zone or your depth of contact is the smallest strike zone in comparison to any other ground stroke. So 
It's really key that you prepare early because once again, contact is furthest in front and you really can't afford to be late on a one-handed backhand versus a two-handed backhand. You, you can get away with more. I think it's important to understand that while the turn is most of the preparation, talking about the turn of your hips and then turning the shoulders more than the hips, there's also uh, some individual movement of the arms. This is for the forehand, the two and one handed backhand. So we want to complete the turn and then complete the backwards movement of the arms. But initially for most of the turn, um, or most of the preparation is from the turn and then once you've completed the turn there is some individual movement of the arm or arms. Here are a few examples of what we don't want to do. You notice how I'm falling back, I'm rushed, contact's late. It's an odd looking finish to my swing. So again, the key is to compare the preparation or the completion of the preparation with the bounce of the ball. This I find is definitely the best way to know if you have prepared early enough or not. Go out on the court, work on your preparation, video yourself to see how you're doing with your preparation. Preparation is only the most important part of ground stroke technique, so you've got to get this right. This is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. I'd love to know if you're interested in learning about the different preparation adaptations and if you want to learn some quality drills to help you with your preparation. Again, get ready for next week as you'll hear the second biggest fundamental to your ground strokes. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell below so you can see all the newest videos. Feel free to leave me a comment for any feedback or questions. Good luck.